Good morning, folks. The sun continued firing yesterday as those spots turned away from Earth. The departing activity remains high while the Earth-facing solar quiet continues settling in. You can see the multiple ejections of plasma here in 304 angstroms, along with a massive plasma filament. One of those eruptions was big. Not Earth-directed, but still a fantastic CME racing through space. 1M flare and those eruptions on the limb kept the high-energy protons elevated and bombarding Earth's polar regions. Earth-facing spots? Calm, as previously stated. The lead umbra center cut has grown and stolen back its negative trailing umbras, departing now while this split umbra incoming to the north is a double negative. Of course, we are still eyeing this major plasma filament here. The giant crests onto the Earth-facing disk now, and will be fun to watch as it comes in, possibly for an eruption watch. Solar wind speed continues dropping out now. Sensitive meters regain the smooth curves, while Earth's magnetic field has some time to catch its breath. Only other incoming was another gamma ray burst this morning. Second one in 26 hours came from Hydra. So we've got that coronal hole down south, moderate power only, but enough for a minor quake watch. Also note the ones coming in in a few days on the equator and north of that in front of the giant filament. Right now the quake watch is enhanced, however, by multiple flare energies earlier this week and the planetary geometry. We have a geocentric conjunction of Mercury and Mars. By the way, we are just a few more days away from the primary heliocentric conjunction. This should be a big solar uptick. But back to this enhanced quake watch. United States gets the surprise prize of the day with both Idaho and California rocking way above normal magnitude. We also had a significant earthquake in New Zealand. And folks, I didn't mention this yesterday because I hadn't yet fully vetted any pre-eruption signals, but there are none. This was not a foreseen explosion and likely counts lumped in with those other underground events. Speaking of the Kabuko volcano, not only was it absurdly visible on infrared, but the explosion sent shockwaves out in the clouds. You see the concentricity? Link is for you below. Also got a good article on how high elevation is changing faster than low elevation. And yes, they forgot to mention that climate change driven by man is heaviest at the ground. Hashtag it's the sun, genius. We should also congratulate Billy Yelverton. Our electric lab work is beginning to receive attention from both plasma physicists and geologists. Papers are in the works. And for members at suspiciousobservers.org, there is an introduction podcast that is under both Yelverton's lab and the fly on the wall section. Also got a new deeper look video on solar wind. It's an advanced concept. It's also available publicly on Star Observer's channel. On to the weather. Earth spots in the Pacific had a great convergence yesterday that whipped over Hawaii and drew down a tornado. Luckily, it was very weak. We could see some stronger ones, however, in the United States tonight where air masses meet in the south. Top level convergence there while another in the Pacific drives hard at the coastline. Weather warnings will continue out west while the top alerts once again find their way to the southern convergence zones. In Europe, we have three flows. North to that low, south near the Mediterranean where you see the flow up from Africa, and finally, that convergence from the Atlantic low has begun to make landfall here. You will see those three areas taking the clouds now and into tonight. Australia? Been quite a doozy. We've had no tropical development with the solar uptick, but the extra tropical strengthening of these earth spot pressure nodes has been serious and also likely triggered that New Zealand earthquake. The sun's energy has been concentrated here before. Last but not least, folks, PrepperCon is here. Prepping, at its core, is the best parts of militia and survivalist mentalities without the aggression and want to kill lots of people. There are lots of reasons to prep, but I happen to know a fair bit about a big one, and you've got two chances to come engage with me on the topic tonight at 5 p.m. and then again tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. All times mountain. Should be fun. Got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. Mobile Observatory West Coast Swing is finishing up at PrepperCon today and tomorrow in Salt Lake City. We hope to see you there. Eyes open. No fear. It's 4.30 a.m. Mountain Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.